So if you've been following along with the video series, you know what it's about. We're going to finish smoothing and we're going to finish painting the Mandalorian helmet. So stay tuned. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to finish smoothing and painting the Mandalorian helmet. For those of you that have not been following along, we are working on a helmet on a 3D printer. Started the first week showing how to print it in pieces on a 3D printer that you probably can't print the full size helmet on. I showed you how to do that. Last week I showed you how to put those pieces together and start the smoothing process. So this week we're going to go ahead and finish the smoothing process which involves a lot of Bondo, sanding, primer, Bondo, sanding, primer. It's a long step and I'm going to show you what I went through and then we're going to finish off painting and I'll show you a really cheap and inexpensive way to make your own visor for this helmet. So let's get over to the workbench and finish this helmet. Alright, so this is what it looks like after you, I sanded the primer and then added more filler in to try to fill in some levels that were uneven or holes filled it in got that even started doing the bottom piece now I'm gonna try and start doing that and see what that's gonna look like with some primer filler so now I'm gonna go ahead and prime it so here's the prime job again it might be hard for you to see but I could see a lot of the mistakes that I made it's looking a lot better you can see there's not really seams anymore it's looking like one piece but there are little imperfections that I can see I can see there's a little bit of a flat spot here I want to sand that down I did Bondo on this earpiece and this earpiece I didn't so you could see the difference it's more square this one's a little smoother so I might go ahead and finish doing that there's little nicks and dimples that I see that I'm gonna sand out we'll see what it looks like we'll give it a good sand but this is why I go through the process of painting it adding some filler painting it again so that way you can actually see what you're doing so you can get an idea and I can see a lot better like I need to fix this piece and I'll be honest with you looking at this now all this work and all this time and energy printed out the right the first time because I'm compensating a lot and spending a lot of time on this piece right here if I would have just printed it good it had a good foundation I wouldn't have had to worry about it now it just not come out bad it's just it's one less thing to worry about and I wish I would have just printed that piece I know it was a 15 hour piece but it would have saved me hours of trying to get this to look right this would have been coming together a lot smoother. So. All right, so we're at the home stretch. This is what I've been using. It's a primer filler by Rust-Oleum. I like Rust-Oleum products. They don't sponsor me. I just like this stuff. So I primed it again, and I did a filler. Obviously, I've been doing that throughout the whole video. I went over it with 400 grid sandpaper. I'm trying to get that fine finish. I still have to sand a little bit more. But in between all that, this is when you really start to see certain spots that need attention. One of the things, and I've been doing it in between videos, and I didn't tell you, there's a little line in here, and I've been taking my X-Acto blade and just edging and redefining that indent because sometimes it gets a little left behind so we'll just go in here and I've been doing that around the whole edge of the helmet and then just sanding out the rough edges after I'm done so you'll see this will be some rough edges I'll just go over it real quick and sand it down a little bit I'm gonna try and sand this out I've, I see little deforms here like this needs to be cut in a little bit more I'm gonna try and cut into that and sand that down a little bit more I mean at this stage of the game you really could just go on to the painting phase but you want to make sure you get spot like that I missed that right there you see how rough it is with the primer filler you could just gently rub that with 400 grid sandpaper and it makes it nice and smooth now you're getting a really smooth finish it's just trying to get the final finish little things like that we're gonna try and sand those out little pucks and then I even did spray on the inside here which I gotta start cleaning up because when the visors in there people will be able to see a little under there I mean I'm not gonna go crazy I'm just gonna try and make it look halfway decent okay so this is when mess ups come out really good you can test some spray paint this is a piece that was painted in rust-oleum aluminum for plastics and then I put graphite on it I don't think it worked out really well somebody said that if you use graphite it'd look really nice I, I think this edge is nice but I don't know if that's the route I want to go I'll figure it out and then I had another one that was silver so the silver's on this side and the aluminum's on this side so this is this is the stuff I'm using so you got the aluminum, which is on this side of the piece, and the silver on this side of the piece. That's why you keep your scrap pieces when you mess up. This is several mess ups that I have here that just didn't work out well. So I just went ahead and kept them because I knew I was going to test paint on them. Now these aren't finished. 
pieces. I haven't put any glaze on them or anything like that, but it's good enough to see what the colors are going to look like. So I guess I don't see a difference between these two. I guess I'm going to use this and just go from there. I wish I could have got more of a gunmetal kind of primer, but I don't want to downplay this helmet too much. So we'll see how it looks. Could always respray it. As I put it on there you can see all the imperfections see I missed a spot there that doesn't look that great there's you could see seams there's stuff that you could see I mean you can't see it from far away so from far away it doesn't look that bad but when you get up close you can see all that nastiness so this is the point guys where you have to say am I willing to do the work and keep going or is that good enough I can't help myself so I'm gonna do the work but this is a good time to try and you know you think you're finished throw one coat on it see what it looks like we can still sand this and work on this and see if we can make it better you know it's just layers we're building up on it so now I can really see what it's gonna look like all right so put in some more filler clean up some of the areas I didn't like so we'll see how that's gonna come out all right so now I painted it white so I can see the difference in layers this is gonna be the last one for me guys I tried to clean it up the best I could but this is gonna be the last layer for me I'm gonna go ahead and sand this this down a little bit in certain areas that I accidentally created runs on so I'll sand that down a little bit clean it up the best I can this this white really shows that crack there and the crack here this is as far as I'm willing to go with this Mandalorian helmet you can go crazy if you want and do it even more and get even better results than I have here this is just as far as I want to take it so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some metallic and see how it comes out kind of go with it all right so still working on the painting process I see some some things going wrong so what I've been taking is 400 grit sandpaper and sanding down anything I don't like because it's just little blemishes but it, it does look bad so I go ahead and sand it and put a coat on it I'm up to three coats on this I'm gonna be doing a fourth one because anything that is showing I've been sanding down with 400 grit sandpaper trying to get it to look a little bit better and then spraying it so this might be a little bit overkill but it depends how far you want to go with your helmet all right so this is with one coat after I sanded it came home from work and did that today just to let you know how I'm spraying this I'm gonna show you a picture of a light stand with a piece of PVC pipe that I put over the top of it so I could spray this and that's what I've been doing it's not perfect but it's pretty good and you can see still the original helmet the next thing I want to do is start working on the visor and I want to take a piece of paper and put it inside this helmet and see how I'm gonna make this visor so I'm gonna make a template by placing this inside of here and seeing how it lines up. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna be a little bit of a, a trick and then I'll show you what the pattern looks like. So I made the pattern. This is the shape that I need, the size. You can see the outline, I just used a pencil. This was only a dollar at the dollar store. Dollar. Plastic face shield. And I'm gonna try and tint this with black magic tint. I have over here. We'll tint that and hopefully that'll be strong enough to fit into the helmet. So I'm going to go ahead and try and set this up for this helmet and see what happens. All right, so anti-fog, not a good way to go. It was not working. You see all the bubbles. Does not look good. I'll show you the bubbles. See? See all the bubbles. Got that mask at the dollar store. Don't buy the anti-fog ones. Buy the regular ones. Just a regular piece of plastic. Put tinting over it, black magic tint that I had laying around. This is what it looks like from the inside. I actually used the soldering iron, put it on there, and then I used little pieces of filament, fill in the gaps so that way it would become one piece. Things that I would have done differently. The first thing I would have done differently is I see a lot of mistakes and you know some people will see them some people won't the first thing I would have done is print this piece in one because there is kind of a flat spot in here and I don't like it and cleaned it up the best I could but you can kind of see a flat spot in that and it was more work than it was worth it was worth the 15 hours to reprint that piece and that's why you do it in sections another thing that I would have done is the seams on the outside I don't like that I can kind of see that seam I mean if someone's really staring at it they'll they'll be able to see it probably doesn't there it goes it shows up on camera really good right there I would have soldered that 
that, I would have melted it with the soldering iron and filled it in. I think that would have made it better because this is loose. Or I did see a printable bracket that you could have put right here. I should have done that. I should have done something that would prevent this because you're doing a lot of sanding and moving around. Another thing I would have done is I don't think I would have thrown body filler all over it. I think I would have just went with the primer filler first, sanded it, primer filler, sanded it, and then did the body filler. I mean, you're going to have to do the body filler. I just think I went a little too crazy with the body filler because then you get a bubbling effect like you see on this. Like I'm happy with it, but I'm not overly thrilled with it. But after looking at some of the helmets that I saw on Amazon that are going for $130 and they have the same imperfections that I have, I didn't feel as bad as I did. So for what it is, it's my second attempt at a helmet. The first one was the Iron Man. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, you know, for an amateur that's just learning how to do this stuff and playing with, you know, 3D prints and filling in gaps for over a year now, I mean, that's an FDM print right there that I used clay to work with it and try to fill in the things. So just to show you that, you know, it's just time and patience and learning techniques. And some of my techniques will work for you, but some of your techniques may work better for you. So figure out what works. I try to do things the cheapest way possible. And sometimes that gets me in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, that's the process. I'm pretty happy with the end result. That's how I do it. I think my next helmet, which I am currently working on, will come out even better. This is just one of those processes the more you do it the better you're gonna get at it so that was my first helmet right up there this is my second helmet it fits really nice this is the way so yeah, I think this fits really nice as I'm echoing back at myself. So yeah, I'm really happy with the process. I hope this helps you in learning how to do this process. Of course, I always think it can be better. I see all the defects. Maybe you guys don't. Maybe it just looks really good on camera, but I see all the defects and I'm gonna get better and I'm gonna work and try and get better and make this process even better for me. Now, if you look behind me, I made a little stand for this just out of a PVC pipe and a 3D printed part that I could screw onto the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there. That's a nice little add-on for my backdrop and it's a nice conversation piece when people are like oh cool you have a Mandalorian helmet where did you get that I made it I 3d printed it and painted it so the process overall took about three weeks you saw bits and pieces as each day I went through it the one thing that I will say is make sure you let it dry one of the things I didn't realize with the primer filler it takes two to four hours to dry I was only given it an hour and I know I said that in the video I was wrong and I found out that it was causing more problems I'm working on a helmet now and it's coming out a heck of a lot better so moral of the story guys make sure you read the back of your can and know the instructions all the information that you need to use this stuff is on the back of this can on the back of all these cans and it'll tell you how to use it so and that was just my ignorance because I was being impatient so that's the biggest thing with this guys be patient this is the next helmet I'm working on it's an Iron Man Mach 85 I believe it was the last one on Endgame I'm working on this helmet now and I learned so much from making that helmet that I'm putting those techniques to the test and doing an even better job on this one so if you follow me on Instagram you want to see the process of this helmet I'll be posting it on Instagram so that way you guys can see what this will come out like and each one gets better guys that's it for me guys make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way and remember to ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make another video and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys debating whether to put Ooh, nice spider right on top of that wow what my paint job little guy You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.